Yeah, we're live. It is a fantasy basketball mailbag show. We're going to be answering all of your questions. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am thankful that I don't have to celebrate Thanksgiving. And I'm also the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball on TikTok at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NBA for $20 off your first purchase. Thank you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listener every day. We are free and we are available on all platforms. We're here. It is Thanksgiving over in the States. Thanks to those of you who are able to extract yourselves away from your family, your food, and from the NFL. And we're here to, uh, for 30 minutes, go through some fantasy basketball questions. And I am joined by, for the first time on the mailbag of this season, the one and only Adam King, mushroom legend. Welcome back. Uh, good to be here, Josh. The Mo's coming along nicely. Yeah, this I didn't grow it this year. This is just my beard, and I just cut the rest off around it. I, I didn't I didn't yeah. want to grow grow that out. I, actually, when I did, I didn't even realize that it was November, and people would think that I was uh, Movembering this this time out. But uh, this just popped up, and uh, here we go. And we're ready. We're all ready to rock and roll. Yeah, no, it, it uh, it's very very thick and, and lustrous. Unfortunately, I can't grow one anymore. I'm not well. What I you can mean anymore? Grow one. What happened? I, physically, I can, but I I can't because I now. Um, since last year, I now have a, a CPAP machine that I wear. Uh, um, and you can't, don't get the proper seal across the nose. Well, I can't. I, I actually have to tape my mouth shut every night when I go to sleep. There's an interesting fact for people uh, listening. That sounds like an absolute disaster to me. But we're not here to talk about noses and taping mouth shut, <laughs> King. We're here to talk fantasy basketball. And point blank, Mish says... Is PJ Washington a drop now that Bridges is back? I doubt he'll be in the rotation in the next games. Let me just get one thing clear. He is 100% of the rotation. I don't know where you would get that idea that he's not in the rotation. He is guaranteed to be in the rotation. He probably plays 30 minutes a night like he literally did the last two games. So I wouldn't be... Yeah, that's that. Let's put that part aside. But his role and his upside is different now, Kingy. Um, we still don't know how this team is going to look because Terry Rogier hasn't returned and Nick Richards is still currently out. I, If I'm in a shallow format, I'm okay dropping PJ Washington. If I'm in a 12-team league and something good comes along on the waiver wire and he looks like he's going to be my worst player, I drop him. But by no means is this an auto drop like a Skylar Mays type scenario. No, I don't think so. I think, uh, yeah, he's right on the cusp there. Um, if someone good comes along, although based on my waiver wires, that's not happening. Um He's he was good the other day. He came off the bench, um, played well. Maybe coming off the bench helps him a little bit. So yeah, I, I wouldn't be dropping him. And, and yes, he'll definitely be in the rotation. All right. So this is the question that we knew we were going to get. We actually texted about it last night. But <laughs> Timothy says, "What are my thoughts on the Giddy situation? How does this impact Wallace and Joe?" Well, we'll talk about the fantasy impact in a second. There's a lot with this Josh Giddy thing that I, I, I don't know about, or that we don't know about in general. Um, what I what I do know is that there are all these photos and videos that seem to imply that he was hooking up with a, a girl who may who may have been in high school. I don't even know 100% how old she was. I've heard 15, 16, 17. I've got no idea. I also don't know what happens in terms of age of consent in these places because here it's 16. In the majority of US states, it's 16. In some of them, it's 18. If it's if it's happening where it's 16, is it grubby? Sure, a little bit. The bloke is also just 20. He turned 21 like two weeks ago. Yeah. And so like that's not it's not a 30-year-old man in that scenario. But, you know, whatever. There's You can have grub, grubbiness and all that sort of stuff. If it's illegal in certain places, then that's a different story altogether. But if it's just a morality thing, there is no chance the NBA does anything to suspend him whatsoever. Like that just won't happen if that's all it is. If it's a legal thing and there are charges put put out, like who knows? Miles Bridges currently does have charges against him at a court date. He is allowed to play. So I wouldn't have thought that he would be automatically suspended in that scenario for, for this. I, I, I don't know because I don't recall. Obviously, this sort of stuff happened with Carl Malone back in the day, but that also happened before he was in the NBA, I believe, and came to light afterwards. And I'm sure this has happened to other NBA players that we don't hear about. 
Um, it looks it looks shit house. I, there's no debating that. Like it's it's not a great look at all. It looks it looks dreadful. But who knows? Like I actually don't know all those full details around it, Kingy, to know the exact age or the jurisdiction or the laws and where that occurred and when it occurred and all that sort of stuff. It's just some posts on uh, on Twitter from the guy who's now deleted his account as well. So we don't actually have the confirmation of of ages, locations to know this stuff. But if it is just a, oh, he was 20 and she was 17, but it was totally legal, the NBA would do absolutely nothing about that. I can guarantee you that would be the case. Yeah, no, yeah, we did text about this and, and look, I was wondering what I'd wake up to this morning and, mm. and I flicked through and there's nothing. Literally, unless you search his name, um, it wasn't really on my timeline. There's nothing from Woj, nothing official. It, it, as you said, it's just this person's account. There's a lot of people on there trolling him and, and saying he should be gone from the NBA, all, all that sort of stuff. But as you said, he's 20, she, she's what, maybe 16, maybe 17. We don't know. We just don't know enough yet. Um to, to make any moves or, or anything like that. So I guess we'll wait and see and just see if the if the team comes out with anything. But as I, you said, if, yeah. if there's nothing illegal here then if, if there's, as, as if, yeah. if there's nothing if there's nothing illegal, the NBA will do nothing about it. Like that, yeah. that, I think that's a simple a simple story. That might be like Josh, pull your head in, what are you doing? But there will be yeah. no suspension if there's nothing illegal. I, we can guarantee that. It might be something illegal. Most people have said, well, this this girl was in California and the age of consent is 18 and she's still in high school. Obviously, that's shit. And then he would likely get charged and then mm. things would go through there. But again, the NBA doesn't usually do things unless there is actually a charge that happens or, or it escalates to a felony or there's a conviction. And... Would they put him on administrative leave like the Hornets didn't? That is totally possible as well. But there's just so many unknowns with this situation at the moment. In terms of what theoretically might happen in terms of fantasy relevance, I would think that Isaiah Joe and Kaysen Wallace both would step up. We've seen Wallace start all these games with Jalen Williams out. And he just doesn't do anything from a fantasy point of view at this point, whereas Isaiah Joe is banging in 57% of his threes and, and scoring pretty well. But would he be able to do that in that same role? Would they want Shea Gildas Alexander to be the only real ball handler in that group. I also don't know about that either. So I think Wallace would probably be the starter and he would be interesting enough in 14 teamers. Joe would still have some appeal, but no one would step up to the theoretical level that Giddy could get to because he's obviously never been near that level so far this season. So yeah, look, it's, it's a situation that obviously we still need to um, see what all these details are and see actually a report that doesn't come from a random Twitter user who deletes their account and see where all this goes. The, the videos and the, and the photos, they look pretty damning, but honestly, who knows? Like I, I just don't know enough of that. It looks shit. Um, it looks bad. It looks, it looks like it could be illegal. Yeah, if it is illegal, then things will progress. But I wouldn't have thought this is going. To, like I've heard people say, "Oh, he's going to be kicked out of the NBA for good." Yeah. Is, bro, they were celebrating Carl Malone. There is no way he's going to be kicked out of the NBA for good. If they're not kicking out Miles Bridges, Josh Primo gets a four-game suspension for literally sexually assaulting a team employee. Um, that's like that's he's not going to be kicked out of the NBA for good if if that is the case. So I I just don't know exactly what is going to happen until we get more information on even any sort of verifiable detail on this. I I just don't know. No, we don't. I actually, and, and just on that, before you go to the next one quickly, I could help Jalen Williams a little bit because if he has to do more playmaking, we saw last year he, he had he had some games where he had double-digit assists. So just something, if, if anything does happen, if he does miss any time, um, maybe he gets a small bump um, in his overall production. That is entirely possible. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. You want tickets to an event? Maybe you wanted tickets to a Thanksgiving football game, but you couldn't find them and the prices were too confusing. Well, Game Time solves that. It takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. You want to give tickets as a gift for a Christmas present? Well, Game Time's going to have you sorted there as well. Sports, music, comedy, theater, everything near you, killer last minute deals, all in pricing, views from your seat, and the best price guarantees all there over at Game Time, which takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Instead of going onto a ticket site and seeing a price, a ticket, oh, man, that looks good. What a great deal. I'm going to buy that. And you buy it and you go to check out and it's like, oh, here's a 20% processing fee and a transaction fee. And a, we just wanted to give you an extra charge fee. It's all there, all in pricing. The price that you see is the price that you pay on game time. And that's like, just, it makes it so much easier to make that decision about what is actually a good deal and what isn't a good deal. Plus they've got their zone price. So you just pick a seat in an area and they just pick the seat for you and you save up to 18% on that as well. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time, download the game time app, create an account and use the code locked on NBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and 
Redeem the code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-B-A for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, that brings us back, Kingy, to answer some questions. This one, I'll just quickly, from Anthony, says, how do you calculate usage percentage based on a box score? I don't, and you don't need to either. Like, I have it, calc- our basketball monster box scores can have usage percentage put onto that, so that's what I view. Um, I don't sit there and try and calculate it off the top of my head. Usage percentage is not a particularly difficult formula to figure out. It's field goal attempts, free throw attempts, and turnovers, and what percentage of possessions that you account for those when you're on the court. So that's that's all that is, and that stuff is automatically calculated. I don't need to go and calculate that. Um, yeah, so there you go. Um, Kingy, someone says you need a full face mask for your CPA, not just a nasal one. I tried the full face one, and it, I just couldn't do it. My dad has one, but I, I just couldn't sleep with it on. It was too big. Fair enough. Matus, did Washington change their offensive scheme, and that's why Kuz has 10-plus assists in the last two games, or is it a happy little accident? I'd probably lean happy little accident, but... It has been very strange to see this gigantic spike in assists. He's been hugely involved, but also maybe there is a change, Kingy, because what we've seen the last two games is two things. Kuzma's assists through the roof and Jordan Poole taking a million more shots. Are those two things related? Uh, It's two games, so I don't know, but you would have to think, yes, we're seeing Kuzma get the ball, set up, and then Poole's shooting. Like Maybe maybe that's part of it. I don't know. Have you seen much to suggest there's been a, um, a big change outside of this statistical anomaly there? No, look, I mean, there's obviously been a change, whether it's something that was planned or not. We we, you, we need to see more games to know. Um, both the guys are obviously rostered. It, it's been good for both of them. Um, mm. Maybe it was just that they figured they need to get pull a little bit more of the ball offensively, get him some more shots. Um, and as you've said, basically what he's been doing the last two games is what we thought he'd do all season. So uh, we're just at, in terms of, of pull, where we are, where we thought we'd be the 10 assists by Kuzma that it is weird um I don't have him anywhere but yeah if you do maybe I'm just I don't know I'm just gonna take a look where are we at oh this I was gonna say, this site hasn't updated their numbers yeah no they have um because I'm gonna have a look at who is actually sending the the passes towards like who's who's assisting on these shots so let's have a look so when Poole is shooting yeah it's Kuzma's had one assist to Poole in the last four days so, I don't know. Okay. Um, Kuzma has set up Gafford with seven assists. So, there okay. you go. That's mm. And he set up Tyus Jones with seven assists. That's weird. Didn't expect that to be the one. So, his assists are going to Jones and to Gafford. Hmm. Mm. Okay. okay. I, I don't know if that's real or not. That seems weird, but there you go. That's where we're at with that. Um, all right. Would I drop Fultz or Tillman for a Kongwu? Uh, yes. I, Tillman very easily like that's yeah. not even remotely close so yeah um, that's yeah I don't think we need to debate too much about that I just thought I wanted to get that one in um, alright N23 is this what we should be, expect for Jaron Jackson rest of season with no Adams Kingy I'll let you handle that one first uh, no no and yeah like I, I think our expectations or a lot of people's expectations were too high coming into the season they thought well with, with no um, ja Morant there, he's going to be second option on offense, that sort of thing. He's never been a reliable, great offensive threat. Um, his, his value comes from his defense, and I think we've seen that by him focusing on that offense and trying to be more of a scorer, it's actually taken away a bit from his defensive stuff. So um, I think he'll be better with no Adams, uh, but I don't think he'll be where he was because he was 13th last season or something from memory. He was He was right on that cusp of being a first rounder. So I don't think he gets back to that level. Um, but I, I do think that it's still a buy low for him. Um, but I'd view him more as a, probably a third rounder this season, sort of top 30. Yeah. Well, that's how sort of how I had him anyway. Like, so it doesn't change that much for me. And part of the thing is that like, I didn't have a, a pretty strong feeling that no Morant would impact his blocks and no Adams would impact his blocks. And that has proven correct so far, but Morant coming back will have a, a, an assistance to him. But part of the reason that he's struggling so much is he's not shooting well. Like that's, mm. and that's not Adams related. That's more, that's more Morant related. So I am expecting an improvement there, but the rebounds and the way that Adams impacts blocks is obviously not going to change because Steve isn't coming back. So I think you should not be looking at um, Jaron as having those block numbers as last season. It's just not going to happen. Um, all right, Abri. Abri, 
How much confidence do you have on Murphy getting to rank 50 or greater? I, zero. Like, I don't think he's going to be a top 50 player. I, I Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen at all. So my confidence would be absolutely zero in him getting to that level. Kingy, because he was at points last season. Again, it depends on how you view the rankings. If you view them at the way Yahoo presents them with nine categories in totals, then you'll be completely fooled into the value of guys because I think he was ranked 27th there, which is, again, complete fabrication of his overall value. And a lot of that came playing 38 minutes a night for the final 20 games of the season, which, again, has zero chance of happening this season. So he's not going to sniff the top 50. Top 90, maybe. Top 50, absolutely no way. Unless he just becomes an absolute ball-out all-star through this period, it's just not going to happen. No, I think yeah, I think you're right. Sort of top eighty, I would think top top ninety, top eighty. One thing I did uh, was surprised at when I was at the Pelicans games watching. He was warming up. He was out there early um, doing the warm ups and and looked looked pretty good. He's a lot bigger than I thought he's he huge. was. Yeah, he's he very is big. massive. Yeah, he's like six foot ten or something. Yep, yeah, yeah but he, and he can move. He can dribble. He can dunk. Yeah. He's he can do a lot of stuff. He's very yeah. very good. And I, I do think he's good. I just think top fifty is just an unrealistic expectation yep. for him. Um, for this season. All right. Um, best food on Thanksgiving? Why would we know? People go, man, do you celebrate Thanksgiving? Do Americans know what Thanksgiving represents? Like, why would we celebrate Thanksgiving when it's mm. this very, very specific American holiday? Like, we just, yeah. what's the best food? I don't know what I'm having today, mate. Like, I might have a hamburger. I might have fish and chips. Who knows? I, I'm not, I'm not, eat, yeah. we don't do Thanksgiving, mate. Um, all right. What are we going to do now? Um, we do get the sales. There, there's something yeah. that we that we didn't used to get, and, and now it's. I've already bought stuff. So in the sales. I so I bought a bunch of uh, t-shirts yesterday uh, yep. on, on the old Black Friday. Um, James says, "What is Jalen Duran's value moving forward? He started explosively." Can we expect rest of season similar to Mark Williams? So I think what he did early in the season was not going to stick. He was had this super high assist rate and he was pulling down, what, 15, 16 rebounds, right? So that's come back to earth. He's dealing with ankle problems. So maybe he doesn't play those 33 minutes a night. He should, but maybe he doesn't. I think a, you know, lining him up with what Mark Williams is doing is is reasonable. And I think that's probably a fair estimation, King. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, I mean, he started. It was incredible, his start to the season, but... I view him more as like a double-double guy with a block. Um, he doesn't have that block upside of, well, Walker Kessler, what we thought, we thought he had, but Wemby, Chet, those guys who are getting two, three blocks. Duran's more of a one, 1. 1.2. So, uh, yeah, top 70 maybe. I don't have a look at this, but I'm pretty sure he doesn't even, like he hasn't been, like he doesn't contest shots at a high rate, which is a great way of sort of working out where block numbers may come from. Like he had really high block numbers in Memphis, but... You know, in terms of the NBA, let me have a look at his like rim frequency. Yeah, 29th percentile in contesting shots at the rim. Yeah. So, again, it's very, very small sample size, obviously. And his defense is solid enough, but it's nowhere near good enough yet. Um, and that could improve, but don't expect big, big block numbers. At the moment, Mark Williams is a better rim protector than... Mm-hmm. Um, than what he is. Um, and I, think, I don't think that's too controversial uh, to say, but... Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. The NBA season is here. We are in week five of the NBA season. The in-season tournament is rolling, and you can get in and score with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. So if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's never been a better time to get in on the action. You've got spreads, player props, futures, over-unders, totals. All of that stuff is available over on FanDuel. You can go have a look at the in-season tournament MVP. Do you think LeBron's going to win it? The Lakers are qualified. The Pacers are qualified so far for the knockout rounds. Or is Halliburton the one you want to take a look at? It's all there at FanDuel.com. But go to FanDuel.com slash Slash locked on, and you can get in on the NBA season action. FanDuel is also an official partner of the NFL, and don't forget to gamble responsibly. That will bring us in again, Kingy, to for the final segment here to answer some more of your guys' questions. Um, do I, Albert Chang? This is a good one. Do I see nine cat twelve team value in Daniel Tice? I don't, but. I'm also not ruling it out. Now, when he was signed, my initial thing was, watch this, because his ability to space the floor enables them to play a little bit more Russell Westbrook. Um, he dominated flat play over in the World Cup. And I say dominated, but I'm, I'm actually sort of relatively serious. He was up unbelievable in those games. Zubats is sort of Zubatsing, and he's already lost minutes. 
I think Tice is someone we look at in 16s, maybe 14s, and I can see him having some 14 team or 12 team value. And I think what he is actually doing at the moment is actually just completely nuking what Zubats can do. I don't think he takes over and plays 27 a night, but I wouldn't actually rule that out. He is quite a good player and he does fit relatively well with some of those other pieces around there. So I'm not rushing to add him, Kingy, but there's uh, there's a little bit of something there. Yeah, I don't. I think I maybe I wrote about him in an article. I can't remember, but I said just to keep an eye on him because they obviously brought him in because they they were, they don't view Zubats as that thirty-four minute night a night guy they need on the floor. Like they need Tice out there for what he can do. Um, he's a he's a pretty good passer for a big guy. We've seen him play well um, in the past, and I think you mentioned it on your show yesterday or the day before. He's good when he's on good teams. Yeah. We, we've seen that in the past. And yep. and he's he's rested. He's fresh. Like, he played in the World Cup, but he basically hasn't played since. Remember when he so, played for Houston, how shit he was? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Dreadful. And and so, yeah, I, again, I wouldn't be adding him, but um, just keep an eye on what, what his minutes look like because Plumlee's still a little while off. Yeah, so, he went back to January. Um, yeah. So, yeah, look, they're obviously going to use him and they're, they're comfortable putting him out there despite being brand new to the team, they they gave him good minutes. Now, Kingy, have you ever been um, referred to as a genie? I have not. Well, you're about to, because Point Blank Mish says, I wish that Josh and Adam can talk about their own projected opinions on Boyan Bogdanovich's comeback. Well, Point Blank Mish, your wish has been granted. Boyan's usage, um, it's going to be lower than it was last season. I don't think there's any debate about that because he played all of last season without Cade Cunningham and Cade's running at like 35 usage. So Boyan's not going to have that role. You can look back at some of the Boyan usage from his days in Utah when he played alongside Donovan Mitchell, but even Mitchell didn't have as high of a usage as what Cade is currently having. Boyan is, I assume, going to be solid, but honestly, Monty Williams has done some dumb shit. And I don't know who is going to come to the bench. It's probably Jaden Ivey. It should be Isaiah Stewart. I don't know who is going to end up moving to the bench. Boyan is totally okay but he is very empty he can be points and threes with some free throw percentage and really not much yep. else and if he's not pumping 25 26 usage and he's getting 21 usage then he sort of hangs around and be pretty mid uh, to, at the back end of a, of a roster i think you probably should add him just to see what happens he, i believe he will play tomorrow i believe he will play in that game and i think duran will be back and they've got decisions to make but to me if i'm monty williams and i'm not because i don't have that much money if i was monty williams and I know how Monty Williams thinks, he's immediately pushing Jaden Ivey to the bench because he hates the bloke. Like He just doesn't mm. think he's worth it. So he's going to come to the bench. Asar's going to move to the two and they'll play Boyan and Stewart at the three and the four. And Boyan will slowly ramp up. Now, Boyan should have been traded last season, but he said they extended his contract. So we'll see what they end up doing here and how much they value him. But his spacing and shooting is so important for getting the other players actual looks instead of whatever spuds they've been running out at other points. So he's going to be useful. He's going to be used. He might not be a part of the future. But whatever you think is rational for a team-building perspective, Detroit won't do it. So don't worry about that part of it. Don't think he's going to be as good as last season, but he is still going to be pretty important to that team. Yeah, agreed. I think he'll be. Uh, I think he'll be good for well, handy for points, as you said, points and threes, free throws. Doesn't get there a lot, but um, yeah. Look, the fact. I mean, I think if if he'd started from day one, his role might have been different. But Azar has been so good uh, that. He, he, it, it'll be interesting to see if he does move into the starting lineup and Asar moves to the two, how that impacts Asar's game, uh, whether whether that impacts his defensive stuff, whether he can get some more assists. I just don't know, but um, I, yeah, I don't I'd think grab it impacts him. him at all. Honestly, I don't think it impacts Asar at all. He, Asar's numbers have actually started to come down a bit. I don't think they Boyan. Have, I don't think yeah. Boyan arriving impacts him at all. He doesn't get by on usage. They're not going to cut his minutes significantly. Um, I, I don't. Yeah, he's not out there battling Bogdanovich for rebounds. Maybe his rebounds come down with Duran there, but I don't actually think it impacts us a, a ton at all, unless they decide to bench us out, which again would cause a relatively large mutiny. I'm guessing uh, in Detroit. Yeah. Pat says, "Am I expecting Middleton's minutes to increase anytime soon?" Pat, jump in the Delorean, go back to yesterday. Have a look. He played 29 minutes. We're there. Like they've increased. Does he stick at 29? I would. I would be find it hard to believe that he pulls back from there. But you never know. Maybe they said, well, it's a big game. It's against Boston. He's got to ramp his minutes up, which would seem to fly in the face of why the minutes were low to begin with, but I don't know. But the fact that he was at 29 yesterday makes me think that we're there and maybe we're a week away from full 31, 32. I don't know. I still think he's going to sit back to backs, but but we're there, Paddy. He's, uh, his Middletons are up. His Middletons. His minutes are up. Um, what else have we got? Looks like Lively will miss some time. He was helped off the court favoring his leg. 
looked like it was twisted sprain. Can Holmes get 26 minutes per game? It's a good question, Jim, because he did suffer that nasty fall. He was helped off the court. I would expect that he does miss some time. We haven't heard an update, and I don't know that we get one. The only updates I think we've got today are the Grizzlies are going to sign Shaq Harrison and Jalen Noel because Desmond Bain also got hurt yesterday, so we need to watch that one. Um, and the Heat uh, said that Drew Smith is out with that knee problem, and I think he's going to miss a little bit of time, but that's the only sort of injury news um, we've gotten today. Nothing on Detroit uh, on Dallas. I, I don't think that... I think Lively will miss. Now, Rashawn Holmes stepped up yesterday, absolutely, and he actually... What was interesting, he actually played over Dwight Powell. And that's important even even when, um, or if Lively is in or out, like the fact that he, Powell played five minutes, I believe, and Holmes played uh, you know, 24 or whatever it was. Is he a 12-team ad? Oh, I'm not sure I want to go that far. If your 12-team league is just a little bit deeper, I would consider it. But this, Holmes' minutes aren't just because of Lively. He came in ahead of Dwight Powell in the rotation. Lively subbed out at whatever minute mark it was in the first quarter, the seventh or yeah, uh, after seven minutes, and Holmes came in. So he was the backup center. So there's already that baseline there. So that would suggest to me that he will get bigger minutes if Lively is hurt. So it's not, I wouldn't say it's a bad move to add him. I'm not sure he's going to, he's not He's not going to be the older Sean Holmes from three years ago. He's, he's lost that part, but he is clearly in that mix to be an every night rotation player at the very least for the short term. Yeah, look, yeah. I mean, if you want to grab him, if you've got a, just an empty roster spot sitting there and you want to see what happens, uh, I don't know what the schedules are. I know there's a, quite a few games tomorrow, so Yep. And if Dallas are if Dallas are one of them, would you play him anyway tomorrow? I, I don't know, um, but yeah, look, I, I mean, as you said, we haven't got any word on uh, Lively, and I get, I'm assuming we won't really get I much news today, being it. Thanksgiving. Yeah, so yeah, uh, yeah it, it's more of a speculative thing at the moment. But yeah, go ahead if you want to. Yeah, so look, there was so much that happened yesterday, 14 games on so many things. Like people didn't, like Bilal Kulabali sprained his ankle in the last 17 seconds mm-hmm. of that game. And, you know, that might have gone under the radar. Desmond Bain ha- had an ankle problem, was limping in the locker room. You might not have seen that. He might miss some time. Um, there's the lively injury. Just so much stuff went on that you don't necessarily see. Like Duncan Robinson's popped up with a thumb sprain now yep. on the injury report. So there's just all these little things which can be really important. The lively one is important. The Bain one is super important. If Bain is out, I, I honestly don't know. Do they play Shaq Harris in 30 minutes? If they do, like you, you grab him. He's a great streamer. That means yep. more for Jacob Gilliard. Does that mean John Concha has to play 30? You, probably. Do the Grizzlies lose by 50 points? Probably. Like they will be disgusting. But Bain's taken 30 shots a game or 25 shots a game. So they're going to have to pump more into Jaron, but pump more into Aldama and David Roddy's going to have to take a ton of inefficient shots. It's going to be disgusting, but someone's going to have to take more of those chances. They just continue to be completely like, um, yeah, all over the place in terms of how those injuries sit. So it's not a great scenario for them, but there were just a couple of things that may have gone under the radar with so much, um, so much action uh, yesterday. Um, G man is last one. This will be the last one. I reckon here is Levine going to miss more time with foot soreness. Um, I don't know. It seemed like it was a little um, weird that it came out. There's a whole bunch of weird stuff going on with that team mm. and the Levine situation. I I do not believe for a second that this is him sitting out and refusing to play until he's traded. No. Um, I don't think that's the case, but I wouldn't be shocked if there's a little bit of gamesmanship going on here and he misses a game or two moving forward. I, I don't know, but... I, I can't tell you what's going to happen with Levine. I, I do expect that he's traded this season. He should be. So should a lot of their other players. But what I do want to transition this into, King, is I take liberty with the question is, what are you doing with Kobe White? I've been holding him all season. Mm, um, so have I. I, he, he's had some ups and downs, but his role has been relatively secure. Um, and, and look, he's playing well at the moment. I think he, he coming off a season high. Uh, he's getting some assists. He's getting some steals. So... It's, it hasn't been smooth sailing, but I don't think we thought it would be. So I've been holding him. I, I haven't even really considered it dropping him yet. I sort of debated. I sort of was, oh, maybe do I drop him or not? Um, mm. But I didn't. And I've held him. And I've said, look, my thing has always been a starting point guard getting 30 plus minutes a night who's not an Ayo Dosumu 10 usage player is useful to have on a team. They don't grow on trees. You can't find those guys everywhere. Yep. And while he struggled and shot 31% for about you know 10 games, that was never going to hold. And the last two, three games have been much better. And he, he looks a lot better in that role. And obviously we saw him really start to put up big numbers with Levine out. So I do believe that Kobe White should be on a roster um, because again, it's just so hard to find a 30 plus minute a night starting point guard um, just anywhere. Like you just 
can't really find those guys who can do a, a bunch of things the way that, that he has started to show the last the last couple of games. Kingy, I think that's it for us. I think we might be done. Um, yeah, we are. So tell people right. what is going on with you, what's happening on your podcast and where they can find you and you know, all the stuff that we need to do. Uh, yeah, Twitter at AdamKing91. Um, I've got... Uh, well, we've got two shows. Well, actually, no, maybe three. Two shows a week. Um, my weekly show with Zach. Um, he wasn't available this week and, and got Dan Titus on the show. Weekly show with Michael Fiddle. We do streaming targets for the upcoming week. And uh, Mitch Casey and I are about to do where we're going to start a weekly show talking about industry pickup as well. So um, just for, for anyone that is following along with that league, we're going to be doing a weekly show, I think we're going to record it Monday nights our time, which is Sunday, so it'll come out Sunday uh, night or, or Monday morning in the US. Um, and that's what I've got going on at, at uh, FBI Basketball. Cool. Make sure you talk about the team on the top of the standings and industry pickup as well. That's uh, very, very important that you do that, King. We always want to focus on the teams right at the top. That's where all the, uh, that's where all the importance is. So do that and fuck, go follow Kingy and all of, his, uh, all of his stuff. Thanks for jumping on, mate, and, uh, and answering some questions with me. No worries. Good to finally get back on and uh, and be back in Australia. And now I'm off to work. Go to work, mate. I'm going to do the outro. I'll see you later. Guys, right. we are done here. Follow this podcast, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Spotify, and on Odyssey. And if you are on YouTube, you thumb it up, you leave your comments down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya. <laughs>